Hey guys, welcome back to Stock Tricks with Nick. I hope you all had a great holiday and were able to squeeze out some profitable trades in the shortened trading week. I know that I must have been a good boy this year because Santa brought me some gains. For a quick rundown of the week, my balance started at $4,629.84. With four trades, I was able to make $23.45, which put me at an ending balance of $4,653.29, which means it's up about a half a percent from the week before. Because it's a shortened trading week, I have time to go through each one of my trades. So let's head over to the E-Trade platform to take a look at what made me successful this week. The first trade comes from my last video with LUV or Southwest Airlines. As a reminder, I had bought 10 shares at 5403 and was cautiously optimistic in my position as the stock was heading towards the lower band of the Keltner channel, which had given in trouble in the past. As you can see previously, the stock kept on coming up to test the Keltner channel, but was rejected and pushed down each time. But thankfully on Monday, it opened higher and blew right past it. I would have been able to lock in a profit of 3.5% on Monday if I sold when the stock tested its 50-day simple moving average, but I decided to stay patient. The short-term MACD line was just about to cross the long-term MACD line, which is a bullish indicator. But you could see how the rest of the week played out, as the stock was unable to close over the 20-day simple moving average. So on Thursday, I decided to close the trade while it was still profitable. Next, I want to take a look at my Twitter trade. I bought 25 shares on Monday for $32.39. I figured I'd get into the stock because there was a giant gap up until $40, which represents a 23% jump if filled. This setup is similar to the Kohl's one from last week, but there weren't any noticeable resistance points above the stock to give it any trouble. I may have been impatient with this, but I exited the trade on Friday when the stock price dropped below the lowest point that it reached the day before. This could be a signal that the stock could dip even lower, and since there was some room for it to head down before hitting resistance at the 20 and 50 day simple moving average lines, I figured I'd exit the trade for now. Next, we have Roku, and oof, this was a rough one. I got in during the half day of trading on Christmas Eve with 10 shares at 145.96, just before the close. The short-term MACD line was just about to cross over the long-term MACD line, which is a bullish indicator, and the stock had closed above both the 20 and the 50-day simple moving averages. I could have had a profit of nearly 2.5% when the stock opened high on Thursday, but I was trying to stay patient. On Friday, when it became clear that the stock wasn't going to be able to close above the support of the 20 and 50-day moving averages, I closed my position. A rough 57.23, or 3.9% down. In hindsight, I should have had a stop loss set at the lowest price that Thursday made, which was 143.82. Doing so would have saved me $35.80, but hey, that's a lesson learned. Finally, we have RAD. This trade saved my winning streak, but it wasn't done just for that reason. As you can see from this three month view, the stock had shot up from 832 all the way up to $23, on earnings beat and positive guidance. But with a move this large, the stock has to come down at some point. I figure this could be what's called a blow off top, where a streaking stock has one final heroic move up before coming down on the same day. So I bought one put with a strike price of $22 that expired on January 17th of 2020. This put option gave me the right to sell 100 shares of RAD anytime until the expiration date for $22, no matter how low the price went. So if we saw the stock return down to say $15, my put option would be worth at least $700. $22 of the strike price minus the $15 that it's currently trading at times the 100 shares. But with this being traded in my Roth IRA, I didn't wanna to take too much risk. So shortly after I entered the position, the stock retraced downwards and I immediately sold for a profit of $74. This closed out a week on a winning note, so I let the market close without having any other stocks. Heading into next week, I didn't find any stocks on my watch list that particularly excited me. I think a lot of stocks are just finishing off their bullish moves, so I'm gonna stay patient and wait for something to come my way. If you guys have any suggestions, comment them below and I'll check them out. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another trading recap.